worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Now I call the power of the kingdom of God over this suffering, and I command and I say, multiply, 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 miracles, miracles of multiplication come to this offering in the name of Jesus. Receive, receive, receive. Let's open our Bibles in Revelation chapter 12. And verse 7 says, and it says, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of all called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brother who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down and they have overcame him by the blood of the lamb by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death now this is a passage that is parallel to the one we read this morning in Daniel chapter 12 in which Michael is released to start a great war in the heavens a time of trouble amen and here is the same battle seen from a different perspective here we're seeing the battle being fought and, and Michael is fighting directly against the dragon and his angels and because of this battle, remember in the morning we read in Daniel chapter 12 that it says that this was the, the, that Michael was released and there was a time of trouble, but at the same time, all those that were written in the book will be delivered. There will be a time of tremendous harvest upon the earth. The reason of this war is to bring forth the harvest. Not as we have been hearing for so long that a harvest is coming and we, we are just getting a lot of people but not as many as the Lord wants. I'm talking about a real harvest. The Bible speaks that the day will come where entire cities will give their lives to Jesus. The Bible speaks that even Israel will turn to the Lord. All of Israel will recognize the Christ. This is an hour of destiny. This is an hour in which God in his righteousness and in his divine wisdom is releasing a battle in heaven. And that battle in heaven, it's promoted by some people on earth. It says, Michael and his angels were fighting and the devil cannot overcome the angels. But it doesn't say Michael and his angels overcame. It says they overcame. Who overcame? The people. They overcame by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony and denying their lives unto death. 
So there's something on earth. There's a move of a certain kind, a certain breed of people that understand spiritual matters, that understand spiritual warfare, and they're led by Christ to enter and to mobilize the heavens in such a way that Satan is cast down to the earth. And that is the hour of salvation I heard a loud voice crying out this is the hour of salvation this is the hour of the kingdom of God to come this is the hour of the power of his Christ God is bringing us into a time of fullness we are entering the most exciting times in all of history. We are entering, we are intercepting the divine events in heaven. And God is handpicking the people. In Revelation chapter 8, 17 and verse 14, when it speaks about the great judgment, the great, the great judgment against Babylon. It says, verse 14 this, and speaking about the ten horns, the ten, the ten kingdoms that are, that, are, that are wrestling along with the beast. He says, this will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Many people think that we cannot wrestle in heavenly places. But those that have understanding are those that God himself calls chosen and faithful. This, he says, the lamb overcame them. He says, those that are with him, where in the battle? Those that are with him in the battle are called chosen, are called faithful. Blessed are those that God can call these names. There are people that are getting together with Christ in such a way. They are going to fight with him. They cannot be overcome. The lamb overcame all these demonic forces. The lamb overcame all this battle. And those that are with him overcame with him as well. Now we are entering. The reason of the battle is the harvest. The battle is not a battle as an end in itself. We don't fight because we hate the enemy and we have a violent spirit that needs to be released somehow. We fight because of the harvest. We fight because there is a goal to achieve and that is that the kingdom of God be established on the earth. The goal to achieve is that the Lord himself reigns over the earth. We are entering a time of the fullness of all things the evil the darkness are reaches are reaching its highest peak of fullness but at the same time darkness are, is reaching its highest point the church is reaching as well its highest point we are entering into the time of the fullness of the gentiles and it is written that when the time of the fullness of the gentiles come all Israel will recognize Jesus as his Messiah. We are entering the time of fullness of times. We are entering into the times of fullness of the power of God. We have not even grasped a tiny little bit of what the power of God released on earth is going to be. And I am speaking to mighty warriors in this room here today. And thus says the Lord to you, you cannot even enter through the door of the level of power I am bringing you into. I am handpicking. 
the ones that will fight with me are chosen. It's not every person that calls me Lord, Lord. It's not every person that just wants to join the army of God. The ones that will fight beha beha uh, on behalf of the Lamb of the Lord. They're chosen. There is a breed of people that the Holy Spirit is looking inside of the hearts. And there's, there's, there's a stirring up in the spirit to go to higher levels of warfare. They say they have overcome. They initiated the battle. And they have overcome with the word of their testimony. With the blood of the lamb. And denying their lives unto death. The army that the Lord is bringing forth is an army that has a testimony against the devil. Here he's not speaking about just the testimony of your salvation. I'm sick and tired of hearing the people of God making the devil as if the devil was the almighty power that can destroy everything he wants. The church of Jesus Christ is being trained by Hollywood. More people spend more time watching what Hollywood has to say than what God has to say. And they, they become trained by what they hear. Faith comes by what you hear. And it is written that in the end time there are going to be foul, foul spirits. Or even they are going to bring astray the chosen ones. And the devil is making an advertisement of himself in Hollywood. Portraying himself as a tremendous power. And I hear everywhere where I go, the church of Jesus Christ being intimidated by the powers of darkness. What are we going to do? They're gonna have, we're going to have all these casualties. All the devils here are so big. Locust mentality. That's what the ten spies came to say to Moses. We look like locusts behind those big giants. But Moses and, I mean, Caleb and Joshua said those giants are nothing besides the great, the great power of our God and our God can just smash them with a glimpse of his eyes. We need to understand what God are we serving and what voices are we hearing. They overcame by the word of their testimony. These people, this breed of people speak in a different way. They don't speak the words of intimidation that the devil wants them to speak. They know they're God. They're intimate with God. That's why it says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty to see with an open face the glory of God and then be transformed from glory into glory into his same image. It is by spending time into his presence that heavens open and you can see. It says, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom to see. Say with me, see. See, see means to see. See doesn't mean to have a little heat from the Holy Spirit or a shaking or goosebumps. To see means to see because when you can see God, you are transformed into your innermost being something happens to you when entering into through worship into the dimensions of God you start perceiving and then little by little it becomes clear and clear until you can have a relationship like Moses face to face with God and every time 
It's not about how many books you read. It's not about how many conferences you go. It's about entering into a place. Or the very glimpse of his glory touches all your being. And you start seeing God as he really is. It's not Satan as Hollywood portrays it. The great mighty demon that can do all kind of casualties to the people of God. People with no understanding are being intimidated. People with no understanding are being hooked in the greatest lie of the devil in the end times that is bringing down the army of God. And everywhere in the nations of the world, there are people just throwing down the weapons of war because of the lies of the devil. Because they hear the voice of intimidation. And they prefer, this is the type of relationship they have with God. They prefer to hear and to bow to the voice of the devil. To the voice of intimidation. And to see the dimension of our God. When you see the dimension of your God. When you can understand because you have spent time looking. At his awesome greatness. Like Job spoke about him. And his authority. He says when he speaks. All the mountains melt. All the ocean bow to his voice. We can hear in all his mighty work. In all his mighty power. is just the whisper of his voice. But we, can we understand the might of our God? When you spend time, they have overcome by the word of their testimony. A testimony of overcoming the devil. A testimony that can speak to the devil face to face. And tell him the greatness of your God. Oh, I will kill you. Oh, I will kill your beloved ones. Oh, I will steal all your properties. And those that are chosen and faithful knows that every word that comes out from the mouth of the devil is a lie. For he has no power. To touch a son of God. John said. He said. Those that are born from God. Are guarded. By God. They do not sin. And the devil cannot touch them. The devil cannot touch them. This is what the almighty God says. I don't care what the enemy has to say. My God says I have given you all power. Somebody shouts all power. Somebody shouts all power. I need more sound here. I need sound in the monitors please. The devil knows if you know who your God is or if you don't have a clue and you live just a mental brain Christianity that you can be intimidated every time the devil wants to speak to you. And I'm telling you, there's a wave of fear that has been released over the nations of the world to intimidate the, the true army of God. And we're here together tonight because God wants to resurrect his army. And he says to me, this is an hour of my fullness and I'm going to bring the fullness of my power. I need please more sound in my monitors. I'm destroying my throat. 
O ribashe karababababababa. O shikarababababa sokurubabababababa. O ribashe karababababa. The word of their, of their testimony is where you can stand knowing God and knowing the light that is in you, knowing the one that fights with you. And you can speak face to face to the devil. Let me tell you something. As Peter told you, I came out from being a voodoo priestess in the world. I was a servant of Satan. And I was a servant of Satan for the very purposes of God. Because I was looking for God all my life. And I was hooked into the lies of the devil. Till he brought me down to the very bottom. In which I serve him as a voodoo priestess. But in those days, I learned many things about the devil. And we gather with the greatest warlocks and Satanists of the world. Came from everywhere. And I'm telling you, there were things the devil was not able to do. There was things the devil was limited. He's a limited creature. He doesn't have the power he says he has. And the devil knows that I know his weaknesses. The devil knows that I know he cannot lie to me because I know him too face to face. And I can stand before the greatest warlocks in the world. And we do campaigns for witch doctors. And I can stand eye to eye and speak to them all of the weakness of their witchcraft. And all they have to say is bow their heads and say, you're right. I understand that you know what you're talking about. Few people suffer much as the warlocks or the Satanists or the witches. They portray great power, but they are so defeated. They are so tormented. The devil does with them whatever he wants to do with them and they cannot reply. They're tormented people in great anguish and agony. And they present themselves as the great thing they are nothing but defeated people when I came to God I came to know a God that cannot be defeated I came to know a God whose blood defeated all the power of the enemy now they have overcome because of the blood of the Lamb and this is the first thing he mentions, because of the blood of the lamb. Now many times we just use the blood of a lamb as something to proclaim. Oh, I proclaim the blood of the lamb. And we speak out of mind understanding. These chosen ones are so acquainted with the blood. Because Jesus gave us the resource of the greatest power that the early church had. And it was through communion. This is true drink. And this is true bread. Both things are analogies of something you do every day. Every day. You need to drink every day. You need to eat. And this is why he chose these elements to portray the need of our spirits to partake of the blood. These chosen ones know the power of the blood because they drink the blood every day. They cannot survive without the blood. This is true drink. And when you drink of the blood, and the blood is not just a, a, a ritual, a religious ritual as we have made it, but it is the empowerment.
empowerment of the Spirit. As you partake of that blood, that blood starts to become every cell in your body. Every part of your spirit starts to be impregnated by the blood. It is in the blood where is the life and it is the life that is the light of men. It is in that blood that the true light is manifested. Not because you confess it or proclaim it from your mind but because you are immersed and possess in a blood that cannot be touched by the enemy that blood is a blood that has not only life but has resurrection life in it and resurrection life cannot be touched by death resurrection blood has already overcome death has already overcome sin has already overcome over every power of darkness they overcame because they are impregnated this is a lifestyle of drinking and as you drink there's so much revelation the blood has the power to open things up. The blood open the grave. The blood open the veil. The blood open the heavens. The blood has the power to bring together heaven and earth. It's not a mental proclamation, but it's something that is alive. They have overcome because they are soaked, baptized in the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus, the Bible says, that has a voice that speaks louder than the voice of Abel. When you're standing before the devil, not with mental intelligence of warfare, but impregnated, fill up every cell of your body, every part of your spirit is true life, is true blood of Jesus Christ. You just have to shine because the very light of Jesus is in that blood. And that blood and that life is light that shines in the darkness. And when you are before the enemy and you stand, you only have to stand. Knowing, knowing is not a soulish thing. It's a matter of the spirit. And you stand knowing the blood that is covering the Bible says that every demon fears and trembles at the name of Jesus. And when, the, when you know that you know that you know that you know that you have been drinking that power in the blood you stand before the devil everything in you starts to manifest the light and this is the power that overcomes darkness he is God he was in the beginning with God he is the life and the life is the light of man and the darkness could not prevail against the light it is not about just picking it out but it's about manifesting something in the spirit realm they have overcome because of the blood of the lamb and you can enter into the most demonic sites 
and I have entered into the very chambers of the sh most powerful shrines of the devil. I have faced the devil face to face. But he knows. He knows. He knows that I know the power that is in every cell of my body. I know when I look at him, he is defeated because Jesus said the Holy Spirit is coming to the earth and he's coming to convict us of sin. He says, because you don't believe in me. To convict you of righteousness because I am going to the Father and all power has been given unto me. And to convince us that the prince of this world has been judged. And that very word in the Greek means demolish. And when every cell of your body is impregnated with the blood and the blood and the spirit work together. The voice of the, of the blood that is activated by the Holy Spirit speaks the declaration that the devil has been demolished. You're going to give that clap offering to the king of kings. Give it to the only one, to the only one that can crush the devil. <laughs> give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus! There's power! There's power! There is power in this place! Sound the chauffeurs! Jesus, 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 Jesus. They have overcome. You may be seated. By the blood of the Lamb. Because of the word of their testimony. And this is the word of my testimony before the devil. The Lord has chosen you as a warrior. When the Lord has chosen you as a faithful one. And he grants you the undeserved privilege to enter into his intimate chambers in heaven. And God is taking to heaven many people around the world. This is not just something that happened to John or Elijah or any other. Heavens are open because the blood opened the way. So we can get freely 
And when it says get freely, it's not just our prayers, but our spirits. Heaven and earth are together in Jesus. That means there's no difference between heaven and earth in Jesus. Both dimensions are together in the believer. And he, he grants you the privilege to enter the place where not too many people can go. And that is the place of the innermost parts of his heart. The heart of God is so tender. Oh, we want to, to love a God in a beautiful throne, a God full of riches, a God full of mercy, a God full of power. But in the midst of that magnificent God, there is a tender heart. And when as an undeserved privilege, he takes you inside of his heart. That is the heart that only the true warriors are allowed to go there. Only the ones that are willing to give their lives. This is the most sensitive part of God and he will not Give those places to any person that would not honor him. Inside those places, there are sounds. The very sounds that made me a warrior. The sounds of the cries of creation within every person in the world. Within every creature in the world, there is a groaning for salvation. In the silence of the room where they are, in the loneliness of their rooms, millions of people have a cry that is crying out, God, God, where are you? How can I find you? And they are astray going to so many directions but inside there's a groan that God allowed and the whole creation groan to see the manifestation of the glorious sons of God and there's a cry in there there's a cry that is so unbearable it's so unbearable how he cries Oh, if I know in my bones what it is to be tormented by the devil, what it is to be crushed down by the power of darkness, if I know that in just one single person, the Father hears this cry from billions of people crying out. And there is a compassion inside that heart. There's so many different chambers with so many different sounds that are so loud, so loud, my sister, my brother, that if you can only touch with the slight touch, the pain in the heart of God is so deep that all of your body cramps of pain. And within that heart, he's crying out, Where is my army who would stand to stop this crying? One day the Lord took me into the very place where he hears the sound of millions of babies in wombs of mothers that are willing to abort them. And there's a cry so loud, so sharp, and you can hear everywhere in that place how they cry, let me live, let me live, let me live. And there are millions of them in the heart of God 
every day, every day. Imagine, what would you feel if someone take the person that you love the most, your very child, your very wife or husband or father or mother, whoever, and in front of your eyes, they start raping your beloved and they start beating to death your beloved. And you can't do anything. What would you feel? Every day. Every day. God the Father sees one by one of those billion of people being raped, being criminally abused, being tortured, being contaminated, being killed by all kinds of sickness, all kinds of drugs, all kinds of unrighteousness. And this thing happens every day in front of the very eyes of God. We don't fight war because there's anger in our hearts. If you fight because of anger, if you fight because of a ministry, if you fight for the wrong reason, you will be defeated. But the very heart of the warrior is when you listen to those cries. When you can grab hold to the heart of the Father and cry with Him. And say, yes, Lord, nothing, nothing will stop me after I have felt your heart. After I have heard the morning. Nothing, nothing can stop me to go and demolish the stronghold of evil. The reason of war is the harvest. It's not just about going and pour oil in the streets and proclaim prophetic declarations. You will be defeated if your heart is not right, if it's not tuned. The battle is not finished until we get the souls. What the Father is aiming for is the souls. What the Father is aiming for is that someone helps him to silence that sound. And that is why he needs warriors. Their people are so concerned because of casualties. Oh, you are becoming a warrior. Let me give you all these books because you're gonna get into all these casualties. If the devil can intimidate you with casualties, well, I'm not gonna fight. I don't care if all of those people go to hell because they are oppressed by that demonic force. If my car is going to be wrecked, I better don't fight. If something is going to happen to my comfort and my possessions and my little things, you have not understood the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you can be intimidated by a defeated devil, if you can be intimidated because a voice arises telling you you're going to lose this and you're going to lose that, you have not understood the heart of God. You have not understood what means the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. The very thing that brought Jesus out of his Father's heart to humiliate himself and to die in the cross to destroy the works of evil was the sound of that pain. Was the sound of that pain. My testimony 
before Satan. When he speaks defeat. When he speaks all kind of threatens. Because he speaks threatens. I say I don't care devil. What I have to lose. I don't care what I have to suffer. Even unto death. And my life has proven it several times. I have been arrested several times. I have been at the brink of being murdered by the God for, for the cause of the gospel several times. I have put my life in risk several times because of spiritual warfare. But nothing can stop me. And the word of my testimony is say, I don't care. Whatever you are speaking, there's something that speaks louder than any possession. There's something that speaks louder than anything I love on this earth. And it is that I have heard the cry in the heart of my father and because of that cry you will pay and every minute of my life I will devote it to harm your territories and to take away from you the souls that you are tormenting someone that is not afraid to lose Becomes fearless. Becomes fearless. Becomes fearless. I know the God I have believed in. And I know the kind of love that God has for me. That not a sword, not the high, not the deaf, not tribulation, not any kind of disturb with separation. From the one that loved me. I know that every step in my life is preordained by a divine wisdom that is higher than I. And my life is devoted to the ultimate parts to destroy everything that hurts. The people that my father cries for. This is the love of Jesus. That you will be willing to give your life for a friend. This is the gospel of Jesus. He that will keep their life. Will lose them. They that will lose their lives will gain them. And this is a principle for everything you have. They have overcome because there's no lie, there's no threat, there's no accusation. I live a transparent life for three years the Lord had me in every platform where I went to strip myself and confess every sin every sin of my life before every auditorium there's not one accusation that is not in the open light there's nothing there's nothing the devil can throw at me Because I have heard, I have heard something that is bigger than my life. I have heard something that I appreciate in such a way that I have devoted my life to heal, to heal. At least a little bit of the wounds that the father has in his heart because of sin. 
those that fight with me are chosen and are faithful. Not faithful to their possessions, not faithful to the things of this world, but faithful to a God that even if we are unfaithful, he will remain faithful. We serve a good God. We serve a merciful God. We serve a God of almighty power. And those that understand who that God is and are willing to devote their lives to fight at his side. Those that fight with me. Not everybody's going to fight this battle. And I hear the Lord saying unto you, many of you have waged great battles and you are great warriors. And I am telling you, you have just been in your training times. The times of completion, the times of fulfillment are to come in the very near future. They have overcome. They have overcome. They are the ones that can mobilize Michael and his angels. They are the ones that God hears and can shake the heavens because they cry with the heart of God. As David cried. He said, in the midst of my anguish, I cried. And the Lord tilted the heavens and came down. Because of my cries. God wants to resurrect the army of God in the world. God wants to make a stop every theology. Every theology that is bringing fear. That is bringing intimidation. That is causing the army of God to throw their weapons. Cannot come from God. My God is not a God that intimidates. My God is a God that empowers. My God is a God that cheers up when I am fainting. My God is the one that gives me strength when I am weak. My God is the one which glory comes upon me in my very weakness. And I can rejoice in every persecution. I can rejoice in every loss. I can rejoice in every weakness. Because when I am weak, he is mighty. There's a power of God. I cannot go on preaching here. There's just a power of God. There's an angel that just come inside this place. And he's about to release a power over the army of God. There's a new lever, there's a fullness of his power that is about to be released in this hour. Stand up in your feet. Stand up in your feet. And start speaking to God. Why are you a warrior? How far can he take you? And I'm going to say this. In the fear of the Lord. Because another lie that the devil is bringing to the army of God. Is that we can only serve to pray. And to battle. And the Lord is saying my warriors go to the very end of the battle. To rescue the people. They are the ones that have the power. I have given unto them the power. And the greatest power of a deliverer depends on the level of his love for the lost. Of the level of the love 
to die for others is what gives you the very authority of God. It's not about an altar call. It's not about laying of hands. It's about how much you love unto death. How far can you go in your quest of loving the poor? Loving the hurt. Loving those in oppression. Start praying to God. If your worship team can come here, please. Oh, shikara baba mama sara baba shara. Oh, kira baba 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 shokuro mama sara. Ishara baba mama mama. I don't know what's going to happen here, but something deep is happening in your spirits. This is not about emotions. This is about a deep work of God in your life. This is an empowerment that comes from above. Heaven and earth are here together. Heaven and earth are here together for an empowerment to the army of God. Start speaking in another tongue. Start speaking in another tongue. He that speaks in another tongue to God speaks mysteries. And it's a way that the power of God comes into your life. Something is going to happen as you start praying in another tongue. Come on, come on, come on. Start praying. Open those mouths. Open those mouths. Open those mouths. Link with heaven. Link with heaven. Link with heaven. And something from above is going to come over your life. Something from above is going to come over your life. Come on, go deeper. 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 Oh, Rabasheki Rabahai. Allow your spirit, allow your spirit to pierce, to pierce through into the higher level, into your higher level of warfare. Oh, Start waging as you have never waged before. Something is going to happen to your spirits tonight. Oh, riba shake it out so ba 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 ba. Oh, shika. Oh, riba ba. There's a stretching out. There's a stretching out. There's a stretching out in the spirits. Oh, riba ba. Come on, come on, go deeper. Come on, go deeper. Come on, go higher. Oh, she riba ba suku. Riba shake. Oh, come on and say. Oh, riba ba shot suku. Oh, she riba ba 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 ba. Oh, raba ba 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 ba. Oh, raba ba ba. Oh, raba ba ba. Oh, raba ba ba. Come on, come on. Go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. Allow those songs to enter into a different level. I speak. Ushika raba ba ba, sheka raba ba ba. When I speak in tongues, it's okay. But when I want them to hear, then. Oh, can I, I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Something will happen. Press forth. Press forth. Press forth. Press forth. The violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Oh, oh, give birth, give birth to 
a new level of power in your life. Come on, keep yours. Keep yours. Keep yours. Keep yours. Oh, kishé, sira ba 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 ba. Oh, shoro ba ba ba. Something is being stirred up. Something is happening in your spirit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 